If we find we have limited funds, we can make use of vendor priorities to ensure we pay the more critical payments to vendors first. Vendor priorities are set on the vendor card. If I open one just as a quick example, under payments and priority, we have our vendor priorities. Um, we can see I've set this one up for one and I've set a couple of other vendors up as well. With the way vendor priorities work, Business Central will look at the lowest number as the highest priority, barring the number zero. So if we use numbers one, two, and three, the number one is the highest priority. So in this particular example, London Postmaster will be considered first over uh, any other vendor that has two or three. Vendors that do not have the field populated will be listed after those that do. Business Central applies some rules to determine which payments it will suggest. Firstly, only vendor entries that can be fully paid are suggested. All priority one vendor entries are, that can be fully paid within the amount we specify in the available amount field of the suggest vendor payments batch job are suggested first. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. After this, vendors with lower priority that have amounts that can be fully paid are suggested. And finally, for each vendor, the batch job suggests amounts that are based on the due date of the vendor ledger entries for that vendor. Invoices with the earliest due date are suggested first. So let's go back to the payment journal. And on the payment journal, we'll try running the suggest vendor payments batch job. So I'll take off summarize per vendor as well. And if I run this just one time, as we have done earlier, we can see a number of entries. And within these entries, we have some values uh, ranging from about 25 to 57 and a few other smaller values. So let's delete these lines just once more so before we run the suggest vendor payment batch job again. If we pay attention to another field on this batch job, we have the available amount LCY field. We can specify the limited funds that we have available to pay our vendors. In this example, I'll use the value of 90,000. And entering the amount and coming off that field automatically enables the use vendor priority tick box. So this means that vendor priorities will now be considered when distributing our available amount that we've specified. And if we now hit, oh, we'll specify our starting document number and we'll hit OK. And you, you may notice that we've got a different number of lines. We have one less now. Specifically, the vendor 30,000 has not been entered. And this is because the amount we've specified, the 90,000, cannot cover our vendor 30,000's full amount that, that's currently owed, we, that we currently owe. So after covering the previous two vendor entries, which total around 80,000, the remainder that we have was unable to cover vendor 30,000. So it skipped that one and moved on to covering the next available vendors based on their priorities for the values that are available, which as you can see, uh, would fit in our 90,000 value. From here, we can review the details we have, the lines that we have, and make any edits as is necessary and post as we need to.